of that song is titled Sweat and Pray. It is the title cut for the album by my special guest today, Jimmy Fiano, which came out on March the 24th, 2024. Jimmy, welcome to the Friday Afternoon Music Mix. Thanks for having me, Gregory. This is going to be a blast. You sent me a copy of your new CD, which I just fell in love with. You have a great track record playing with some members of classic bands, Bad Company, Vanilla Fudge, Foghat, Night Ranger, Mitch Ryder. You've been at this for well over 30 years, helping a lot of other people with not only recording session work, but also live gigs. And then you're also a guitar instructor who does one-on-one guitar lessons. How do you do that, Jimmy? Do any of them like on Zoom or are they all live? Well, the ones that I'm doing now, Gregory, are live. And I've actually had to scale it back a bit. But there was a time 
when I was teaching very, very full time, I got very comfortable with the whole Skype thing. Everything was shut down. You know, I'm in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Everything was shut down. I know other places it was even worse, but it was very bad here. There were no gigs, but I had been teaching before that. So a lot of my students didn't want to lose touch with me. And then a lot of people that were just sitting at home said, hey, this is a good time to start learning guitar or upping my game. So what I did is I put it together where we would do a Skype lesson for like an hour. I would show them all the stuff. I would be taking the notes with a pen and writing it all down. I would save those notes and scan them, email them a PDF of our lesson for that day. They would usually zell me or something like that. That was a really good thing for the people taking from me. And it was good for me, of course. It sustained me financially. And I love teaching. I started playing when I was really young, like seven or eight years old. My sister brought a back of guitar from Mexico and I just never put it down. I just kept playing and playing and playing. Then I took lessons from different people over the years. I would tell somebody, oh, do something like this. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute, I know how to do it like this, but I've got to actually technically explain to them how to do that. If anybody out there is a guitar player and they start teaching, they're going to realize or they have realized how much more you learn about the instrument when you have to actually verbally tell that stuff to people. And sometimes it can catch you off guard because kids and different people, they ask the craziest questions, non-musical things that you've got to figure out a way to try to answer it. I think my teaching skills along with my guitar playing, just keeps getting better. I, and I think most people that play music, they aspire to get better. I've had people that taken guitar lessons from me, and they said, "What? when does it end? I said, when does it end? It, it never ends. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this is for the rest of your life, your guitar playing, if you choose to keep playing guitar, is work in progress. It is for you, and it is for me. If you interview other good guitar players, they'll have idols or they'll say, oh man, I wish I played like that guy. I mean, we're talking some of the very best. They look at others, they're doing stuff that they wish they did. That's the way it is. And that's the beauty of music. Let's do a second song from this terrific new album. This is Talking Blues. <laughs> Too hard, I'm talking news. No place to say at night that kind of blues. None of that. Go to your own side. Nothing like that. I'm talking blues. Now the things that I've done did. You don't wash your mouth of soap. In some of the states, the ones that get caught while they're swinging from a rope. I'm talking blues. From the cops, that kind of blues None of that Where's my allowance, daddy? Nothing like that I'm talking blues Come on! Start. Would you take it all of your money and she's calling your best? 
best friend, honey. Oh, that's the blues. Heartbreak and misery. That's the blues. None of that schoolboy crushing, fancy loving, and nothing like that. Looking at your website, you went to Nashville to record the vocals for this terrific new album. Worked with someone who's been on my show who I just think is terrific. She worked with Little Feet for 15 or 16 years. She's just one of the nicest people in the world, Sean Murphy. I love Sean Murphy. She was so motivating to me. What had happened with that, she had a record out called Loretta, asked if I would play on some of the stuff, and she found three songs that she thought I might be right for. I did them here out of my place and sent them to her. One of them is called Strange Life. It actually did quite well. Doubled up some parts and threw some harmonies in and took some solos. So when I got done with the record, they came back and said, oh, the, uh, we, we love what you did with the stuff. And I was said, thanks. And, and Sean said, well, now listen, if you ever need vocal part, feel free to look me up. And I said, listen, do not say that kind of stuff to me unless you mean it, because I will never forget that you just said this. <laughs> so, so that's exactly what happened. Finally, the time had come to pass where I was doing my record and I had already written her in the, the parts. I'm like, oh yeah. So then we get Sean to sing the background vocals here. What that did, I think it took my record to a whole nother beautiful level, having her do those parts. I told her I was going to do it and I called her and I said, okay, I'm ready. I have you do the background vocals. How do you want to do this? And she said, well, why don't you come up here and stay with me and TC? I can free up about five days without gigs. And she goes, okay, I know a studio up we'll work out of. It's a place called Coal Mine Studios. Every night we just belt it out. And I said, will you coach me on my vocal? She said, sure, I'll, I'll help you. So she helped me and she had all these little witchy brew potions and stuff. And it was great. I knew what I wanted. She just took direction. She was like one and two takes everything. You know, oh, I want this part. Now let's layer it on top of this. Let's do this. You know, I mean, she's a pro. She just nailed it. And then when I came back, put it back together, because I did the basic tracks down here at a killer studio called Power Station, which is an affiliate of the original Power Station in New York, which was owned by Tony Bongiovi, who's done stuff from, oh my God, from the Motown on up. So we went into this studio that has this like a million dollar big Neve console just running your guitar, miking it up and running through that makes everything sound beautiful. I just put very basic tracks because I wanted the vocals to sell the song. Then after she put her parts on and I put my parts on, then I came back to Power Station and I did the overdubs. Had it mixed down here in a Miami by a guy named Steve Gordon. He's mixed a bunch of hits. And they're, these are all friends of mine that I grew up with. So they were all happy to help me. Got it done down here at a place called Fuller Sound. Mike Fuller has remastered it there. From beginning to end, the whole food chain was very expensive vittles. Let's put it that way. Let's do a third song. It's called Strangled by the Hands of Time.
Jimmy. You've got a good website. It's Jimmy, J-I-M-I, Fiano, F-I-A-N-O.com. You also have a great Facebook site, facebook.com forward slash Jimmy Fiano Guitarist, instagram.com forward slash Jimmy Fiano. You have a YouTube channel. I do. I'm still, you know, all this stuff is, is new to me. I'm an old guy. This whole new way of thinking with the whole social media thing, it is what you have to do. I'm dying for people to hear my music. I'm hoping that they love it. Now I've been really bitten by the bug. As you said earlier, I did do a lot of session work on lots of people's stuff. As I was doing it, I started to come to the realization that I think I have some stuff to offer here. I thought, well, I could write songs. You know, I have an iPhone and I go into that little memo thing. And at the weirdest times, I come up with ideas like, like sweat and pray. I just started coming up with the idea and that's how it came to be. And I'm always driving in my car, coming up with these silly little slogans that wind up being titles. Then I write the song kind of around the title, which is how I did sweat and pray. If you listen to the lyrics of Talking Blues, I was running these jam nights and there's some really insanely fine young guitar players. Unbelievable. 10, 11 years old. I would be hosting these jams. The parents would come and bring a kid up and say, can my son sit in? He plays like the best blues guitar ever. And I'm thinking, well, maybe in style he does, but I'm pretty sure at the age of 10, he hasn't lived <laughs> the blues. Has he almost been homeless? Has he ever been arrested? How, <laughs> how many girlfriends have left him? Well, he's only 10, probably not even <laughs> one. So, so that became the premise of Talking Blues. Their idea of blues is that now you go to your room, son, to a 10-year-old, that's the blues. Second time I said, where's my allowance, daddy? Like, if you don't have to get your allowance for a 10-year-old, that's the blues. But you're still living at home, eating three square meals, and you're loved by your parents. So <laughs> anyway, so that's that's right. out. <laughs> I knew you and I were going to get along. I really did. <laughs> if you go to the video, that was the first video I did for Talking Blues. And if where we talked about what we were going to do. And I said, well, what I don't want to do for a video is have three or four guys standing on stage trying to look cool, look into the camera and do a song. I don't look that cool. That's not going to work for us. Let's work off the premises of the songs. He goes, well, what are you talking about? So I said, well, I've got this idea for Talking Blues. I said, I want to have a crib. I want to get a little baby body. I want to rip the head off. And I want to stick my head through a hole in the crib and have my beard cover so it looks like my big fat head on a little teeny baby body. <laughs> so if you look at Talking Blues, that's what I did. We did stuff like that. And we just did simulations of me getting arrested where I, I used flashing red and blue lights and I was hiding from the cop. Another one where I had a, a mock girlfriend who uh, she's throwing stuff at me as I'm exiting my trailer and all that kind of fun, silly stuff. And you can see these on your website. Oh, As yes. well as on your YouTube channel. And his, uh, <laughs> your great website is, once again, Jimmy, J-I-M-I, Fiano, F-I-A-N-O dot com. He's on Facebook, Instagram. Jimmy, this is a great new album. It came out on March the 24th. It's called Sweat and Pray. You may have waited a while to do your first original music, but you did a great job with this. Production is good. Sean Murphy with the backup vocals. And the guys that I used on the recording, the bass player and a drummer, I don't know why. I didn't use keyboards. I was determined to just do it guitar, bass, and drums. And I think I can get all this done all like that. And it's funny, one of these Weisenheimer harmonica players said to me, well, I don't know how you're going to do a blues record without harmonica. And I said, I don't know, maybe you should call Joe Bonamasso and ask him. <laughs> that shut him right up. I listen, I like harmonica, but there was no need for it on this record. My girlfriend, Ronnie, you know, it's funny because when we're watching a movie, she's like crying over like something that happens in a movie. And I'm like, Wow, I, I, I swear, that's got to be Ry Cooter on slide guitar. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, what the hell? I, I swear we're watching two different movies here. After I had the tracks down, I FaceTimed her and I said, listen, listen. And she listened and she started crying. She said, I had no idea what was going through your head. 
And I said, oh, you don't even want it. I was killed you I had. But, <laughs> but let's go out today with this is not your father's version of Hey Joe. <laughs> yeah. You know, Hey Joe's been around for how long now? 50 years. I actually started doing it with a band that was going to cover Hey Joe. I'm not going to just come in and go. So when I came back from Nashville, the owner of the studio power station finally heard a rough mix of Hey Joe. His name is Rob Roy. He's a great guitar player, great friend. So he listened to it and he goes, wow, that's really good. At the end, I used Dobro and I used mandolin, acoustic guitar, and Sean did all these vocals over the top of it. That was how I did that. It's funny because when we did the original tracks, turned around to the engineer, that was a really good take. How long was that? He goes, eight and a half minutes. My record right now is getting airplay roughly on maybe a hundred radio stations. A lot of them are requests for Hey Joe and they're going, wow, what a great version. And I'm so happy that people are digging it. Thank you so very much for joining me here today. This has been a hoot talking with you. I've really enjoyed learning about your process and how you put this terrific album together called Sweat and Pray. Maybe we can get together again after that next album comes out. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, I'll be knocking on your doors. Let's hear Hey Joe.
head, yo. 